Now, what is going on, guys? Today, we're going to talk about AJV, which is a JSON schema validator that is particularly useful if you want to validate incoming payloads for your node server. So it's somehow like an alternative to Express Validator, Yub or Joy. Uh, but the main difference is that it supports the JSON schema draft, which is RFC 8927. And that one is a cross-platform standardized way on how to describe like JSON types. And that is interesting because technically speaking, you could just share the JSON schema with another developer who's using a different programming language. And if there's like a proper library out there, then um, it shouldn't be a problem to, or then that programmer can use the same validation. Yeah, so that is what we want to do today. I already prepared um, an example project over here. So it's a very simple server that or we spin up like an express server. It has like one router. Um, this router has like one endpoint, which is register. And we're just going to pretend that we want to register a user. And what we want to do is we want to check whether a first name, email, date of birth and country code is present and fulfills like a specific criteria. Yeah, so this is what we want to do. And the actual request in this example project is uh, handled by this uh, user controller, which just returns a string. So I'll put the code in the on GitHub and the link in the description down below. Okay, cool. So this is where we start. And we now want to get started with this AJV thing. And the first thing we need to do is we need to install this. So we'll scroll down to here. And as you can see, you just need to run AJV, uh, npm install AJV. Uh, just one more note here. There is another package, it's called AJV formats. And this one adds a couple of useful formats such as uh, an email validator or like a host name validator and so on and so on. So they have basically uh, split the functionality up. So there's this core module, which is AJV. And then they have like this AJV formats, which supports like a bunch of things like URI and date and time and so on. And we will need this uh, package as well. So go ahead and npm install all of this. Yeah, so I already have it installed, but anyway, I just ran the command again. And uh, yeah, let's see how we can get started with this. So if you go up to the top here of this um, readme here and you click on, where is it here, getting started, you end up on this page. And here it shows you like the minimal example, right? So you import this library, you create a new instance of it, and then you have like some schema. So this is basically this JSON schema cross-platform thing that we're using. And then you compile this schema. So you basically tell this library, hey, look, I want you to take this schema and I want you, I want you to give me a function that can very efficiently evaluate whether some JavaScript object or complies to this uh, schema, so to say. Yeah, and then you can run it over here. Yeah, so this is how this works. And the interesting thing here is that you will need to import this uh, package and you will need to create an instance of this uh, class. And then you can also pass uh, specific options. So let's maybe get started with that. So let's go over here. Let's make a new directory and let's call this schema. And uh, yeah, now that we have this thing, let's just make a file and call this AGV instance because we are only going to have one instance of this thing. Right, and the, the advantage of this is that we can configure AGV how we want it. So for example, this is a very good property, all errors true, because that means that the validation will just not stop at one point once it encounters the first error, but it will validate everything. And that is very useful because after all, you want to return all errors to the front end, otherwise it's very tedious, right? The user submits, gets back one error, then he gets back another error and then he tries to submit again. So that is just like really annoying. Cool. So I'm just going to import this. And what else do we need? We need to hook up this formats uh, library here. And here's how this works. So you import AGV and then there's this uh, method called add formats. And then you just pass your instance to it. And then it will hook up like all these formats uh, inside of your AGV instance. And then it's going to uh, work really well. Okay, so let's add this function here and then you would say add formats and then AJV. Oh, actually I have like a typo here, right? It's supposed to be AJV, AJV instance. Yeah, and that should pretty much do it. 
So now we have this thing and let's just export it. Okay, so here we go. Now we can work with that stuff. And I already told you that we want to validate or we want to check for these fields. Now they're somewhat arbitrary, but it's just an example. So let's create a new file in here and let's call this the user schema. And inside of here, we're just going to import the AGV instance. And then we can define like our schema. And there is also actually we can copy and paste that pretty much. So let's take this, and let's paste it. And you can see that this JSON, this standardized schema here, this JSON schema, it does have like a few fields that are required. So for one, you need to say what type of object, uh, what type you're validating. So is it like an object? Is it a string? If it is an object, then it might have like properties. And here you can define these properties. Okay. And the properties that we want are say first name, which is a string. Uh, then we want, let's see, email, which is also a string, but which is supposed to be formatted as an email. And by the way, this formatter now is coming from uh, this uh, AGV formats package. So that's why we installed this thing in the first place. Date of birth is also a string. And I want to show you something else. This one is interesting. It offers you the possibility to use enums. So you can say something like, okay, I want to have a country code, but obviously you cannot have whatever you want in this country code. So the country actually needs to exist. So here we could say, okay, we only allow the US and we only allow uh, Canada. Okay. Yeah. And then outside of this, you can specify which fields are required. Now I'm just going to take everything. So I will just say you need first name, you need uh, email, you need date of birth and you need country code. Now we need to take the schema and compile it. And the reason for that is that AJV is like very fast. So if you give the schema to AJV, it's going to put out like a super optimized validation function. And this function will is then very, very fast. So this is also one of the, or this is like a focus of this library that it is very fast in general. We can just copy and paste this and say, okay, actually we just need to call uh, AJV instance, in our case, dot compile. And this is what we can export. Yeah. So that looks good. Yeah, let's see, how do we plug this thing in now? Well, the easiest way would be to have some sort of middleware in here, right? So before the request goes to the controller, we just run through some sort of middleware. And then if there's like an issue, then it's going to return like a bad request. And that is very nice because that means we don't have to deal with any payload issues in our controllers because we have already validated everything. So I'm going to make a new directory. And then inside of this directory, I will make a new file and I will call this uh, validate DTO. So DTO for data transfer object. Oops, I should have named it uh, DTOJS. Yeah. And what we're now doing might be a little bit weird at first, but it's actually relatively straightforward. So I'm going to make a function. And this function itself is going to return another function. So a function that returns a function. And the reason is that this is somehow like our middleware factory. So remember, like a middleware is a function where you have a request, a response and next as parameters. And what we want to do is this function here, you, you give it like some compiled schema, which is actually a function. So the output of this ajv.compile is actually a function. And then like when you give it like this, this schema, uh, then you return a middleware that will just execute this function. And this is what we will do in here, right? So we will just say const valid equals and then ajv validate and then request a body. So we're just going to say, hey, um, we have to find this schema, just run this over the request body. And if there's any issues, please let us know. And if this is false, uh, falsy, then we know, okay, there's like some sort of problem. And then we return a bad request error. And otherwise we just pass the control on to the next handler in the chain. And now we have something that is really important. And that is how to deal with errors in here. 
because there's a little caveat and I just wanted to show you what I mean. So this AJV instance, like it's a function and this function has like a property, it's called like errors. If you run this function, it might uh, find some errors, right? And then this property points to the most recent errors. So to the errors that correspond to the most recent run. But then if you call this function again, uh, then it will point to another error somewhere in memory. And that's why it's super important that we copy the reference to this error. Because otherwise, if we run this thing again, and now we get other errors, then we would throw away the first reference. And the reason for that is mostly historical. Uh, and the second reason is that it's much more efficient, because if this thing were to return the error as an object, then it would need to allocate an additional object. Right? So it's just simpler to have it here as a pointer. And this actually works simply because node is like single threaded. So as long as we don't have like an await in here, it will all work. And that's why it's so important. So don't put like any await inside of here and then try to extract the errors. So no matter what you do, if you have any await, you definitely definitely need to extract the errors first. And that's why this is so important here that you say, okay, I'm going to copy the reference. Uh, and then I will just say, okay, uh, response.status. 400.json errors. So in this case, it's not so much a problem here because we are immediately returning this, this error. But say if we had some error handling middleware and we were to throw an exception here or we were to say next with this error, then we don't know what's happening later down the road, right? You could have an async and a wait. And if this is the case and the server handles another request in the meantime, then this errors object would be gone. So that's why it is imperative that you copy like the reference to to this one and then once you have copied it it's safe to pass it on also i have like uh, written some lengthy comment which i'm just going to copy and paste just that if someone finds this repository it's all fine okay yeah i think that's it pretty much why do we have this we don't need this and um yeah i think now the only thing that is left we need to go to our routes and then we can just plug this in, right? So we can say const validate DTO. What was it? Validate DTO require middleware validate DTO. Something like that, right? Yeah. And then we had validate DTO and user schema. Okay. And user schema, we need to import that as well. So we will just say require schema user okay so now theoretically this should do something right so what we did is we plugged in an additional middleware for handling the request payload and let's just try this out so i'm just gonna run npm run dev and yeah it starts up so that is fine so let's pull open like a postman and let's go to the make like some post request to the register yeah let's just send this um Oh, and I see there's like a bad request and I saw I made like a mistake. It must be country code like this, right? Okay, so now it should be fine. If I now send this, you can see, okay, nice. I get the status 200. Yeah, I think you've already seen like the error message. So say if I put like some property here, now for this first name property is missing and now you get like a really nice error message back, right? You can say, hey, here's like this one is missing and it must be there because it's required so this is like really nice and the same happens or something similar happens if you say pass an invalid email then it also gives you this error right must match format email okay so that looks pretty good yeah and i think with this approach it's quite nice because you don't have to care in your controller about how to handle this request but you can still validate everything Cool, so that's it pretty much for AJV. Uh, as you have seen, it's a nice little library. It's kind of cool that it uses this, uses this standardized JSON schema with the approach we have. It's uh, very easy to maintain, right? Because if you have more endpoints, just add more things here in schema and uh, just plug more things here in for the respective routes. And uh, yeah, that's how I would use this library. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any question about this, uh, let me know in the comments below. Also, uh, if you want to send me a tweet, my Twitter handle is at production coder. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.